Hall of Fame, we have with Simple Suburban Living, and today we're down here in the aquaponics garden, the indoor aquaponics setup here, um, and I want to discuss something that I get a whole lot of questions about, and that's kind of the system maintenance costs, monthly maintenance costs for the system, and also the setup costs, so how much did it cost to build this and put it all together. And so I wanted to do kind of a detailed walkthrough of all the components of the system, how much I paid for everything, um, and then same thing with the running costs or monthly costs, kind of detail all the different components and what they cost to run monthly. Um, just so if you're looking at putting a system together or adding on to a system or doing indoor versus outdoor, you got an idea of exactly what the costs are involved. Now, there's a lot of variables here, a lot of things you can change and do differently. So this is just focused on kind of the choices that I've made and what I've done uh, with this particular system. So hopefully this helps you out and uh, we'll go ahead and just take you through some of those components now. Okay, so we're over here kind of at the start of the system, and here we have our fish tank, swirl filter, and our sump tank. Um, each of these are made out of 55 gallon drums. These I found on Craigslist for about $10 a piece. Um, you can find them even less than that, but that's just what I paid for these. Uh, the swirl filter is not absolutely necessary, but this is something that I uh, recommend, and it is something that I'm including in the cost of this system. So inside the fish tank, there is a small air bubbler, and there's also a small aquarium heater. Uh, the air bubbler and the aquarium heater together were less than $25 together there. Um, in the sump tank, I've got a regular little aquarium pump. Uh, this was $40. Uh, again, all these products I'm going to list in the description, and I will list links to each one of these products um, over on Amazon.com if I purchase them on Amazon, and it'll have uh, an up-to-date price. Some of the prices have fluctuated, but this gives you a general, general idea. At the bottom of the sump tank here, I also have a, a little automatic top off of a little float that sits on the inside of the sump tank that pops the system off when it gets low on water. Um, that was less than $15 as well for the water line and the little kit that, that that came with. So all the PVC pipe and fittings for the entire system was less than $50. It's not a huge, huge expense. The PVC pipe and fittings are pretty, pretty inexpensive. That includes any valves that I needed and uh, the fittings and all that kind of good stuff. Now, where the system does jump up quite a bit in cost is these bulkhead adapters. Um, I've got one, two, three, uh, four of those bulkhead adapters. Uh, those are eight dollars per adapter. Now, you definitely can get cut some cost here and go with what's called a uniseal. Uniseals are, are a fraction at cost, probably I don't know how much they are, maybe a dollar or two a piece. They're a lot less expensive. Um, I chose to go with a more rigid type of adapter here, just because I wanted the ability to. Um, move the system around a little bit and I also just wanted to make sure that I did not have any leaks since I'm inside here. I didn't want any leaks at all. I'm not saying that uniseals will leak. A lot of people use them and they have great luck with them. Um, I just wanted a more rigid connection here. So that's somewhere that you could definitely cut the cost. I spent about $60 on bulkhead adapters. You could probably just spend less than $10 on yours if you want with uniseals. So that's one of those areas where you definitely could cut back on cost. Okay, so we're over here with kind of the grow system, and this consists of a frame that holds up the four grow beds, which are just a half of a 55 gallon drum, and then over each bed we've got a light. Um, so the frame, and again, I already talked about the PVC pipe costs and everything like that, that's all included in what I mentioned earlier. Uh, the 2 by 4s and I used wood screws to put all this together, um, was about under $40 for everything. You could probably even be cheaper than that if you use nails, but I always go a little bit overboard and use 2 and a half inch duct screws on everything, uh, just so I can take it apart easier later, and it just sucks everything together a little bit tighter, so that's why I went with on this. Um, again, the barrels were $10 a piece, which makes each grow bed about $5. Um, and uh, the, the next thing that I'll talk about is actually the rock that is in each of the grow beds. So uh, I've mentioned this many other times. I tried river rock to start with, which was a little less expensive, but I ended up going with uh, what's called beechwood pebbles. And uh, I bought this at a landscape supply company. So this is the, the gravel to fill each of the beds here. This was $90 a yard. Um, I didn't quite use a whole yard. I used a little bit less than that. So I'm going to say about 80 bucks. Um, probably using $70, $80 to fill you know, all the grow beds with, with the uh, grow media. So not too bad. Um, inside each one of these grow beds is a bulk adapter where the uh, bell siphon drain goes down through the bottom. Each one of those adapters, again, was about $8. Uh, I think I got those on sale a little bit cheaper. I got a bag full of, of all four of them. I'm, I'm pretty sure I got that for about $16. But, um, Right now, they're about going for eight dollars a piece. is the cheapest I can find them, so that's what I'll quote the, the price on for those. Uh, that's pretty much everything that I needed to set up the grow bed system. 
And then we'll move on and I'll talk a little bit more about the lights. Okay, so this is just kind of a close up on one of the light fixtures. These are all homemade light fixtures and I have a whole other video on how to build those if you're interested. Uh, I'll put a link over at the end of the video here. Um, each one of these light fixtures costs about $40 to build. Now you could build these for a lot less than that. Um, the, the sockets that I chose to use and some of the other things were kind of on the higher end. Uh, you don't have to do that. There are lots of other ways to do this. You can build wood ones and save a lot of money. You can do lots of different things. So um, I kind of went a little bit on the high end here. $40 per light. There's four of the lights here, so about $160 is what I spent to build all my lighting fixtures. Now that doesn't include the bulbs. There's a lot of different things you can do with bulbs. You can buy, you know, a couple of giant 300 watt equivalent CFL lights. You can buy um, a bunch of the contact fluorescent bulbs like I did. Uh, you can buy all kinds of different types of bulbs. So what I have set up here is I have eight bulbs per light. Um, you'll see the different colored lights here. Some are 2700 Kelvin, some are 6500 Kelvin. Um, that just depends on what type of stuff you're growing in the beds. But um, the 6500 Kelvin lights are more expensive. Just depending on where you get them from, I've seen them as low as $3 per bulb. I've seen them as high as $6 a bulb. I spent about $4 a bulb on these 6,500 Kelvin bulbs. The 2,700 Kelvin bulbs are cheap. You can get those anywhere. They're readily available at any hardware store, Ace Hardware, Walmart, wherever you want to buy them from. They're the kind of standard light. So overall, I spent about $100 getting all of the lights for this system. And so um, total cost with the light fixtures and the light bulbs that I have in here, you're looking at about $260 for the light. And that ends up being the most expensive part of the system. Okay, so you've seen kind of all the different components of the system and how much everything costs. Um, I tried to give a comprehensive list and, and view of all the different prices of all the different parts that I used here. Um, I even threw in kind of the, the cost of just extra little things that you might need like silicone and drill bits and other little things that you kind of don't think about when you're building the system. The total cost that I came up with for the entire system was between five and six hundred dollars. And there's a lot of variables there, size pumps you use, uh, the lighting fixtures, the bulkhead adapters, all that kind of stuff. But the bottom line is a system of this size, very similar to what I have here, is gonna, it's gonna run you between five and six hundred dollars. Now if you're building this outside in a greenhouse or something like that, you don't need these lights, or you already have them, uh, then you can almost cut that price in half. These lights cost about $260, including all the bulbs, like I said earlier, and so that, that's a majority of the cost here. Um, but overall, we're very, very happy with the system, very happy with you know how much we spent to get this set up. This is something that we're going to have forever. Uh, I tried to build it with good components so that we can move this around and change it and add to it as much as we need to. Um, and this will move with us if we ever move out of this house, so uh, this is something that we're going to have for a very long time. So it's well worth the investment. Um, so I'll go ahead and just go into some of the running costs and uh, kind of see what those, those are. Okay, so again, I talked a little about the light bulbs here that I'm using. Uh, these are actually 23 watts per bulb. Uh, each one of these is what's considered a 100 watt equivalent if you're equivalent to the old incandescent lights. Um, so these consume 23 watts of power each. And uh, it depends on what you're growing in here and what kind of power you want. You could go with less expensive bulbs. Again, you could go with lower power consumption bulbs. You could go with higher. But what I'm using here are 23 watts a piece. So what that ends up being with all four of my lights, with eight bulbs running in each, each uh, light, it ends up being 736 watts total that I'm using for all of my lights. Um, what that ends up being is 0.74 kilowatt hours, um, which is just converted. And if you're not sure about how to do that, I can answer any questions you have in the comments. So 0.74 kilowatt hours is what I'm looking at. I run these lights for between 10 and 12 hours per day, which ends up being the equivalent of 8.88 kilowatt hours per day. So that's what I'm using on the lighting system here. Currently we pay 15 cents uh, per kilowatt hour here in Michigan uh, this time of year for electricity. And uh, that ranges anywhere down from 11 cents up to 15 cents, just depending on the type of time of year. Uh, but uh, 13 cents per kilowatt hour is what we pay. So what that ends up being is about a dollar to dollar fifteen per day to run the lights, or you know about 30 to 34 dollars per month. Uh, so it's really not that much. And when you really compare that to, you know, we just lowered our cell phone bill by 40 bucks a month just by calling and, and changing our plan. So you know, it's if you think about it like that, you can very easily 
cut something else out, you know, lower your cable bill, lower your cell phone bill, cut out XM radio or something else in your in your in your life, and you know, be able to grow some food in your basement or inside. So it's really not that expensive uh, when you when it comes down to it. So the uh, ability to grow food indoors and the ability to have organic, fresh uh, produce available to us all the time is worth that in a heartbeat. That's just uh, just how I feel about it. But so 30 to 34 hours per month for the lights. Um, and I'll go over and kind of go run through some of the running costs of the other components as well here. Okay, so some of the other running costs that we have here for the uh, aquaponic system. Uh, we obviously have to provide electricity for the small aquarium heater, the air bubbler, and the water pump. Um, the water pump and the air bu bubbler are pretty much minimal. Um, I figured it out and it's like a dollar a month, I think. Uh, so it's, it's, it almost doesn't cost anything. Uh, the aquarium heater really depends. There's so many variables there, but the best estimates I could find online uh, was about 300 kilowatt hours per year. Basically, that breaks down to about four bucks a month to, uh, to run the heater in the system. And it really just depends on what your air temperature is. Uh, down here, it probably has to run a little bit more because we're in the basement up against the cold walls and that. Uh, but it really just depends. So we keep the house at about 70 degrees, so it, it honestly shouldn't have to run very, very much. Uh, so that's kind of a, probably a high estimate. I would say between three and four dollars a month is probably what you're gonna, you know, have to run a heater if you're doing it indoors. Now, if you're doing it outdoors, you gotta have to run more, you know, more heat in the wintertime. This depends on where you live. You might even have to have some kind of a cooling system if you live in a hot environment because you want to keep the temperature of the aquaponic system between 65 and 80 degrees um, if you can. So. But anyway, uh, so again, the air bubbler and the water pump are minimal. I'm, at, I'm estimating about a dollar a month, and the heater I'm estimating about three to four dollars per month. Um, the only other real cost, running cost that we have with the system is fish food. Uh, this is a giant tub of fish bites. Now we just have goldfish in here right now, so you know goldfish will pretty much eat anything. I feed them scraps of the plants sometimes if the leaf falls off and stuff like that. I'll give them that, um, but mainly we feed them the regular goldfish flakes. This I think was $40, I'll give a more exact price, I have it written down here. Uh, this is more than a year's worth uh, of goldfish waste. So uh, I figured it out, it's, you know, costs about an hour to two hours per month to feed the fish. So overall running costs, including my lights, the pumps, the aquarium, uh, heater, and the fish food is between, you know, $35 and $40 a month is basically where we're at. Somewhere in there, just depending on how much you run the lights, Depending on what you're growing and all that kind of stuff, you can run the lights as low as 8 hours a day, you can run them as much as 14 hours a day. So there's a lot of variables there. The pump runs 24-7, so there's no variable there. The bubbler runs 24-7. Really only the other variable is that heater, which again, you can adjust however you want, and there's a lot of, depends on your, your factors with your where your aquaponic system is. Um, so, so that's our, our monthly running cost, between 35 and 40 hours a month. And like I said earlier, really is, you know, when you, when you consider how much that is, we're going to easily be able to get our monies out of this in organic vegetables every month uh, once I get everything production going in the system. And uh, as well as, you know, eventually we're going to be able to harvest fish out of here as well. So when you really consider those factors, the system pays for itself. Okay, so that kind of wraps it up. Hopefully that gave you some good information on the running costs of the system, the monthly costs that we spend here, and also kind of what it costs to set up the system initially. Um, this system has been well worth every penny we put into it. It's just been such an amazing experiment and experience to have an indoor growth system in the house. We've been able to grow kale and Swiss chard and lettuce and peppers and beans and all kinds of different things. Um, over the next few months, I'm really going to focus on production, so I'd love to take you along. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Um, I also have links to some other related videos at the end of the video, so stay tuned and check those out as well. Um, and I also have a lot more information over on our blog, so I'm going to do a more detailed blog post that, that kind of gives you a, a, a list of all the different products. Um, all those products, you can also click on those links and it will take you right over to Amazon and you can get more information on individual products that we've used here in the system. So please check out the blog. Again, there will be a link in the description and there's a link to the blog at the end of the video. Please hit thumbs up on the video. I really do appreciate that. It makes a huge difference. So just reach out there and hit click on that thumbs up for me. And please leave a comment. Ask your questions. Uh, leave a comment. Add any input that you have. I always appreciate that. I try to answer everyone's questions. So as always, I thank you for watching. Have a good one.